Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Marie Lichinets and I'm a first year student of International Relationships Department in Petrozvodsk State University. Today I'm going to present to you about the Antarctic Treaty System and the future of this international document. My presentation includes such parts as Introduction, Historical Background, the Antarctic Treaty System, Precarious Future of the Antarctic Treaty, Summary, Conclusion and References. The main aim of this presentation is to analyze the reasons for the reformation of the Antarctic Treaty. Let's talk about background of development of the Antarctic Treaty. The proliferation of scientific research stations in the 1950s and 60s and laying claims by varying nations were incentives for the creation of the Antarctic Treaty. That's why 12 countries represented on the slide signed the Antarctic Treaty on the 1st of December 1959 in Washington. Nowadays, Antarctica is home to more than 80 research stations operated by 32 nations. In total, 53 countries are signatories for the Antarctic Treaty. However, we are surprised by the view that the Antarctic Treaty has slivered on its promise to protect Antarctica and her unique wildlife, but this document has actually amassed quite a few critics in recent years. Plenty of experts claim that rampant illegal fishing in the Ross Sea is evidence that the Antarctic Treaty hasn't been nearly as successful as some have claimed. Some scientists say that Antarctica should be divided up by nations operating research stations for its greater job. Allowing nations to claim the slaves of Antarctica is an extreme and rather preposterous notion to many. And if each nation were free to protect its land, and more importantly its waters, Antarctica could be better off. Pointing on that the Antarctic Treaty is not as effective as it was a few decades ago and that these documents need fundamental rearrangement and even cancelling. To sum up, I would say that disbanding the Antarctic Treaty altogether and letting countries fight for your own slice of territory down here might be a little extreme yet. But there is no denying that the Treaty and Antarctica will need some serious protection in the years to come. As more countries join the Treaty, geopolitical issues are bound to become more prominent and the Antarctic Treaty will continue to face mounting pressure. There is why we need to find an alternative solution to this case. To conclude, I'd like to say that Antarctic nature and wildlife should be protected anyway. And there's a main reason why we should take reorganization of Antarctic Treaty very seriously. Here you can see the references that I used. Thanks for your attention.